Hi, so in today's video, we're going to differentiate the function uh, natural logarithm of the modulus of cos of x. So we're going to differentiate this function in today's video. Um, let's just think about the domain um, of possible x values uh, that would allow this derivative to be well defined. Um, so obviously, when we think about the natural log function, the Lund function, uh, we need to make sure that uh, the values of x, it, well, the values of the variable inside the function are greater than zero, just because uh, an ln function looks like this, and it's not defined for values um, of x uh, less than or equal to zero. Uh, so we just need to make sure that these modulus of cos of x values are indeed greater than zero. Um, so yes, we require, so we require that, sorry, let me write that again. Uh, we require that the modulus of cos of x is greater than zero in order for this natural logarithm function to be defined. Um, so, of course, this cos modulus of cos of x function is greater than zero. So the, the, the values of x in which this is true would be real values, but apart from these multiples, these odd multiples of 2 pi, sorry, pi over 2, my bad, uh, so 2k minus 1 times by pi over 2, uh, where k is just uh, a value in the integers. Uh, so why is this the case? I mean, we did this in the previous video. We kind of looked at this in my last video from yesterday. Um, again, if we draw like a sketch of this, uh, y equals modulus of cos x function. Um, it looks something like this. Um, so like this here and so we've got like these uh these repeated roots at pi over two uh three pi over two over there uh, negative pi over two and so on and so on so these odd multiples of pi over two um so therefore this modulus of cos x function is greater than zero for any real number apart from these odd multiples of pi over two um so again we did that in the last um in the last video uh so therefore yes this derivative will be defined for all values of x apart from these odd multiples of pi over two okay so now now let's go ahead and uh differentiate this function properly and again it's going to be a case of using the chain rule so we're going to differentiate this natural log of the modulus of cos x like so um and again yeah using the chain rule we can just say that this is exactly the same as differentiating uh, the ln of uh, the absolute value of cosine of x uh, with respect to the absolute value of cosine of x, and then multiplying that by the derivative of uh, cosine of x, sorry, the modulus of cosine of x with respect to the variable x. And again, this is just an application of the, uh, of the chain rule. So chain rule um okay so this first derivative here um we know that when we differentiate uh the natural logarithm function of a variable with respect to that variable we get one over that variable so this first derivative here is just going to be one over the modulus of cos of x okay great and then this second derivative here um again we actually did this in the previous video so when we differentiated the modulus of cosine of x with respect to x, we got this result here. So we got negative tan x multiplied by the modulus of cos x. Um, so again, this is a result we did in the previous video. You can check out yesterday's video. Um, and that was the result that we got there when we differentiated um, this here. Okay, so then we can just tidy this up a little bit. So we're gonna get negative tan x multiplied by modulus of cos x over modulus of cos x. Obviously, this is just going to cancel out to the number one. And so our final result is actually just going to be negative tan of x. Um, so therefore, what we can say then is that when we differentiate the function uh, ln modulus of cos x, sorry, modulus cos x, we get... Uh, just negative tan of x. And that's the key result from uh, for this video today. 
Um, I guess we could also extend this a little bit further. Uh, so, I mean, what we can do is just write the minus sign on the other side of this uh, equation here. So if we do that, we get obviously minus d by dx of ln modulus cos x. Um, and this we know is now equal to tan of x. Um, so what we can actually do is just write the minus sign inside the, the differentiation operator. Um, so minus ln modulus of cos x, and this equals tan x. So what we can actually say from here, um, using our rules of logarithms, we know that when we differentiate, well, when we have a, a number in front of uh, a logarithm, we can actually write that as a power of the uh, variable that we're inserting into that logarithm. So this is actually just the same as saying that if we differentiate uh, the natural logarithm of the modulus of cos x to the power of minus one, then this is equal to tan x. Okay, so we know that. So therefore, what we can actually say from here is that if we differentiate the natural logarithm of the modulus of sec of x, then we get tan of x. Um, because we know that well, we know that the, uh, the cos to the minus one is just the same as sec by definition. So this here is just the same as, yeah, so the derivative of ln modulus of sec x. Um, and this is equal to tan of x. And so we can uh, get this result here just by using this result that we got uh, back here on this page here. Um, so I guess in conclusion, then what we can say is that when we differentiate with respect to x, ln modulus of cos x, uh, we get negative tan x. And when we differentiate, uh, so when we differentiate with respect to x, ln modulus sec x, we get positive tan x. So yeah, so these two results are the key results uh, to take away from today's video.